Well, yesterday we brought you the first half of the Scotty McGee story that showed us how he used a tragedy in his life to exert a tremendous amount of focus and passion towards his football career. Today we bring you the second half of the story that leads us to present day in Scotty's life. Scotty McGee had used his brother's tragic murder to fuel his dream of being in the NFL. Now, playing at James Madison University, Scotty would have to deal with another tragedy that may change his plans forever. So about five years after my brother's death, um, my, my, my friend Danya, who I would always, you know, run to her house during times when I was just, you know, I needed an escape. Um, she actually ended up experiencing a tragedy in her life as well. Her sister was a victim of domestic violence. Danya was up at James Madison visiting. At that time, uh, she got a phone call that Kendra, her sister, was missing. And she immediately said, I know he's done something to her. Her husband had ended up shooting her in the head while she lay asleep in bed. And he locked their two and four-year-old children in a room with a box of cereal. And then he turned the gun on himself and shot himself. She was three days uh, gunshot wound, entrance exit with no medical attention and held on and fought that long. There were times we'd go to visit her in the hospital and the doctors would say her temperature is too high. It needs to go down. And I remember Donya and I being in there and I said, well, let's pray. And we would be in there praying. And by the time we finished praying, we're literally opening our eyes like every couple minutes and the temperature's just dropping. And it would just be, like, man, look at the power of God. Yeah, he's always been very compassionate and always has had a heart for people. And I think that's what it was with me too. He just saw that I was hurting and he just wanted more than anything to take the hurt away. He actually is the one who got me to give my life to Christ because I saw how he was living and how much he had changed over the years that I had known him and he was a completely different person um, once he received salvation than what he was when he was in middle school or high school. He was so different. It hurt me to see her family hurting. It hurt me to see her hurting. And it was in that moment of, of her hurt that I, I started to see that I don't just care about her. I truly, truly care about her well-being, and I don't ever want her to experience hurt like this or pain like this again. It drew us to each other more than I think would have happened if that didn't happen. So I, I actually blame them. <laughs> I blame Marcus and I blame Kendra for bringing us together because I don't think if that had happened that we would have looked at each other the way that we developed our relationship into loving each other more than friends, but more so as husband and wife. She's now my wife, and we have three beautiful children, uh, Marcus, Moses, and Makai. Oh! He's an awesome father. Um, probably better than he probably ever thought he would be. They love him dearly. Um, they look up to him. They're proud to say that, you know, my dad is Scotty McGee. They have something that is modeled before them that they will be able to take with them when they become husbands and when they, when they become fathers because it was modeled correctly. Hello, Scotty, and this was Jack Del Rio. And Jack said, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is Jack, the head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then Gene Smith got on the general manager and said, hey, so, what do you think it'd feel like for you to be a Jacksonville Jaguar? It'd be a dream come true. You're like, are you guys serious? Hey, we're gonna take you with our next pick. We look forward to bring you in. We love everything about you. We can't wait to get you in. From as far back as I can remember, this has been a dream. This has been a goal. And it was nobody but God that allowed it to happen. I said, okay, Lord, well, I'm gonna use these talents and abilities to bring you glory on and off the field. So whenever I stepped out on the field, it would be, Lord, allow me to operate in the anointing on the field. You've blessed me with these talents and abilities. Allow me to use them to bring you glory. So first year, uh, season's going great, and I end up uh, sustaining a shoulder injury. 
So I was on injured reserve for that season. Then I'm coming into the next season, playing the Falcons, and um, I get hit, and then I continue to run, but I felt something happen in my knee. I ended up going to get an MRI, finding out that my meniscus was torn. Uh, I ended up getting the surgery, and I ended up digressing during rehab because I was kind of rushed through uh, physical therapy, and I ended up uh, straining my MCL, returning my meniscus, and I had a diminutive ACL. So then I needed another surgery after that. And I'm going through rehabilitation, I'm in prayer, and the Lord says it's time. I was in the prayer closet one morning, the Lord says it's time, and I'm thinking, man, okay, time to get back on the football field. Here we go, finally. And the Lord says, no, it's time to lay the foundation for Mo. Those RIP Mo t-shirts that I started to make as a way of coping with my brother's loss. Um, in college, they became Mo wear, uh, but now it's what we know today as Motive's clothing. With me having my loss back in you know 2003 of my brother, it was one of those things where I discover a passion. Um, I ended up doing some victim advocate work, and one of the main things that I discovered was that people were hurting after the trials were over. They were still hurting. They were still suffering. They were still grieving. I said, hey, why not just go back to school and get my master's in, in, in professional counseling? And so now I'm pursuing my master's at Liberty University in professional counseling. And really, it's to do more than just advocate for victims of crime. And it's to do more uh, in, in the athletic arena as well. I can relate to them, not only from a mental health level, but also from the locker room perspective as well, because there's a lot of stress and strain that guys go through that the media doesn't really capture. And for me, it's if I can help there as well, why not? Oh, man, if, if, Marcus, if Marcus could see me right now, I think he would just be, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Especially considering everything that's taken place, he would be, he would just say, man, I'm proud of you, little bro. Thanks to our Mike O'Neill for the story. And, and honestly, I think this is my favorite, you know, two-piece story I've seen here at, you know, so far for Game On. And just, you know, amazing testimony this guy's life. The fact that your brother gets shot, yeah. you know, and then God uses it for good. You know, he gets you motivated, gets you on track for football. And unfortunately, you know, a sister gets abused and then he reveals your wife to you. And then your football career is over, but then God once again opens another door for you. Yeah, pretty yeah. impressive. And I was actually with Mike when he was doing the interview yeah. with Scotty. Scotty was saying there's actually opportunities made for him to go back to the NFL. So we'll have to uh, keep track with him and let you know if he end up going to the NFL uh, this coming year. But he's training for it, trying to Different make that. that next move and also really making a lot of progression with his um, Mo clothing wear as That's well. Awesome. Yep.